What's cooking, you fitness fans? Welcome back to the old lady's favorite YouTube channel. With us today, we have a lot of news. Oh, actually, maybe not a lot of news, but we got some important news to talk about, especially in preparation for Juventus's return to the pitch. First off, we're talking about the problems for Max Allegri. They're only continuing to grow. Um, the South American players will not be back in time for the game against Napoli, and that is a big deal. That's a big problem going forward. Uh, Allegri is going to have to change things um, to his back line for the game against Napoli. And then one positive is Chiesa put on a show for the Azuri, but nobody else showed up. So positive with the negatives. Anyway, stick with us. We'll fill you in now. Ciao, ragazzi. Welcome back. You're in the Bianconeri Zone. My name is Justin Sofro. Today, it's Friday, September 3rd, 2021. And we've got the latest of all of the news that you care about when it comes to Juventus. But first, before we do anything, make sure you hit that like button, smash that subscribe button if you're not if you're not already subscribed to the channel. Make sure you do that. We want you to join our community and we want to hear your stories. So make sure you leave a uh, comment in the comment section down below, letting us know where you're from, um, how you became a Juventus fan, whatever have you. Especially if you haven't done so before, or if you're a new subscriber, that's when we really want to hear about it. Um, Anyway, um, well, and then also hit that bell icon and stay notified. Anyway, <laughs> but uh, let's just go ahead and jump into it. What are the news that we have for you today? Well, the first thing we have for you today is we're talking about the biggest story of the day, the most frustrating story for a lot of us, especially when we saw the performance that the uh, Juventus team has given the last two matches, you know, or so, even going into the preseason a little bit. But Gazzetta della Sports reporting that the South Americans Cuadrado, Danilo, and Alexandro will return on Friday the 10th, just a few hours before Saturday's match begins. The players coming back from South America should do a 10 days of quarantine. Solutions are being studied. This is ridiculous. Um, oh, Lord. And this is where I'm torn. And this is where I'm a bit torn um, as a Juventus fan. And then also, I am a very well-known supporter of the Italian national team. Thus, I understand, um, you know, these players and their, um, their desire to represent their country uh, when they go and play in the international break. It's just such a ridiculous setup uh, right now with the um, ongoing pandemic that they set up the international break the way they did. Um, I kind of wish they could have set up the international break to not have been a break at all and maybe have had it gone on before the season started or something or maybe push it off to later. I don't know, something to make it work out. It's difficult, though, when you have all the other um, obstacles going on throughout the year going forward. So he here's my thought. It's just overall, and again, I know that's the premise of the show is I give you my opinions along with the stories. You don't give a damn about my opinions, but I'm going to give them to you anyway. Um, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm very nervous because we saw how poorly our um, team played against Impoli, um, against the second half, um, against um, the very first match of the season. And it was just really, really um, poor uh, start to, to the year. And especially now, you're saying not only are we going to play with what we have, and Cristiano Ronaldo's gone, whatever that's worth, good or bad, bad. Um, you now have to worry about Cuadrado, one of the good, one of the big creators. Danilo, a very solid defender. Sandro, who can have his days. Uh, we'll say Sandro, the only left back that we have as a starting left back. Um, that's worrisome. It throws everything in flux. It means you're going to have to play players like the Stelio out there. Um, we'll get into that. I'm as, as confident as some of us may have been <laughs> going into the Napoli match. Uh, that, that confidence has to be pretty poor right now after we just saw what happened. It's time for Allegri to um, put together some kind of magic or whatever he can do going into this because it's going to be a, um, a bleep show, if not, <laughs> to be honest. Um, there's your, there's your Friday in positivity. <laughs> Sorry guys. Uh, let's go on, uh, continue on the topic. A uh, Correa de la Sports saying the chances that Dybala, Cuadrado, Danilo, Alexandro, and Bindaker will not play against Napoli are high. A few days uh, later against Mamo, they will be available. So that's great. They'll be available for the, um, Champions League. But honestly, right now, if you've been on the channel, you know what my focus is. My focus is on the Scudetto. Um, you have to build piece by piece to get back. And if you want to get to the top, Champions League is another level. Uh, yes, Mamo, they should be able to beat regardless. But even so, um, you can't drop more points. Like, you can't, you cannot do this. You have to be able to beat either, hopefully, Napoli and AC Milan. But you have to beat at least one of them um, to stay in the race. Otherwise, you're digging yourself a gigantic hole. Um, similar to the hole, maybe even worse than the hole that Juventus was in at the beginning of last season. And that worries me um, seriously. 
especially without Dybala, one of our, um, when he's on his game, top strikers out there. That's going to worry me, and Cuadrado for sure. Um, Danilo, yes, probably. I think they're literally listed in order. Maybe Ben, uh, ben Dinker and uh, Alexandro. <sighs> Depends what they give you some days. You know, some days it's horrible, some days it's good, give or take in those circumstances. But yeah, I don't know if you if you haven't noticed, I'm a little bit uh, a little bit concerned about the uh, team moving forward, especially when it comes to um, producing something of quality to actually get us back on the rails of what we need. Uh, let me know. Okay, moving on, slow paced, over dramatic, maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit um, disheveled, whatever have you. When it comes to this stuff, let me know your opinions on this right now. Uh, who would you start in their in their place? Um, how much are you worried? How much are you frustrated? Leave that in the comment section down for me below. Anyway, uh, we'll talk about the new formation. It looks like Gazzetta de la Sport is reporting that the back uh, three, uh, they're moving to a back three for the uh, play against Napoli. And we're looking at a, a combination of Bonucci, De Ligt, and Chiellini, uh, which if you're going to go to a back three, you couldn't have a better back three. Those are your top three um, center forwards. So that that's a positive, if you will. Um, I'll be happy to see Chiellini. To me, that's one of my biggest things is when they come back to play, I need Chiellini back there playing in the, um, you know, I need him back in the captain's arm, man, and I need him in play, actually going around and forcing people around, moving them, guiding them. Uh, we haven't had a real true leader um, in the first two matches of the season. I think you need to have Chiellini out there to be a leader and to be a guiding force going forward for a young team, uh, especially a young team under a new head coach, new head coach uh, once again. So let me know your thoughts on that. I know a lot of people aren't super... Um, enthusiastic when it comes to playing a, uh, a you know, a three, uh, three man defense in the back. And then we have, finally, we can end it on a positive note, or we can at least talk about a positive note. And that is our boy Federico Chiesa in his performance uh, for the Azuri yesterday, scoring that beautiful goal. Um, it was a beautiful pass back pass to him and then a uh, goal for him. Um, I was excited. And then the rest of the match happened. <laughs> and, um, you know, there's only so much he has to can do. He's running back and forth down the field. And then also we're worried about, you know, him getting injured. The last thing we need is Federico Chiesa getting injured for playing a full match and not coming up to it. Um, there was a joke I made, but part of it was like, is that really what it is? I was like, to me, I wonder if the Azuri team has just become so content with, um, you know, just go playing to a draw and then, Coming to PKs at the end because you had the Spain, you had um, the championship or not? Yeah, yeah, the uh, championship match against England, and then now you're back into this, and it's like without having that um, that killer instinct to end it during regulation. Um, it worries me a little bit, just given the situation. I think, and um, if you watched the live yesterday, Julian kind of helped me a little bit to like ease my thoughts when it came to this whole idea. Um, I think overall. They should be fine, but if they play Switzerland and they don't win that match and then whatever happens, I will start to worry a little bit about World Cup qualification, uh, which is something that shouldn't be happening when you just won the Euros. There's no part of me that should be worried about this, um, but I'm afraid that they could, um, you know, slew, you know, slink into it a little bit, if you will. Um, other players, not so, I'd say everybody but Chiesa was pretty flat. Um you know, I don't know if they're still celebrating the Euro or whatever have you, but it was not not exciting play from the rest of the squad. Uh, what I will say, and I guess if the first team, first team when you have, you know, guys like um, Insigne and Immobile out there. Um, and I actually used to like Immobile a lot, but Immobile with the, with the um, national team is not the Immobile of Lazio. But what I will say is... Um, I'm I was a little bit... I would not say perturbed, but it was kind of annoying that like one of the reasons I wanted to tune in was to see Moise Ken um, play or maybe not even play, but at least be dressed, swapped out, substituted, something like that. Uh, but he wasn't even dressed to play. He was up in the stands for that. So there's no possibility of him playing. And then, um, you know, I was really hoping to get more of it. You playing Bulgaria, you should win that match. There's no reason to lose against Bulgaria if you are Italy, uh, especially in a match like this. But I, what, I, what I'm trying to get at, though, is overall, I was a little bit disappointed that we didn't get to see Moise Kim play because I would like to see a little bit of a uh, a warmer up, warm up, whatever have you, for Juventus play, just to see what kind of shape he's in, um, how he's putting together maybe some form of an attack. 
for them. Uh, maybe what he can bring to as well, because I haven't really seen him in a little bit, really since PSG. I don't know if he's really played much for Everton. Uh, I think maybe a little bits and pieces, but I did not get to see that, though. Anyway, but I guess really right now, um, I can't complain too, too much because... I mean, it was it was a match. If it was a ma- if it was a match where they won like three zero, then I'd be more frustrated. But being that they they literally drew this match with the first team, hmm, it worries me. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, this is not the most positive news video of the day, but I just want to get my thoughts out there. Uh, read the news, and then also my thoughts, which are not like I said, I'm a pessimist by nature. I apologize, guys, but I'm gonna keep it real with you. I like to think of this more as reality check. Um, YouTube channel, I guess, when it comes to Juventus and when it comes to Italian national team. The only reason I'm harsh on anything is because I enjoy them. If I'm not harsh on it, if I if I don't, like, so all the teams that I love, I am harsh on and I grade with a pretty, pretty harsh scale, I would say. Some people would disagree with me, but I would say overall I'm harsh on it because I care about it. If not, it's because I don't really care about it, if that makes sense. It's, it's it's the dad in me, <laughs> if you will. Anyway, I appreciate you guys for tuning in today. Uh, that's all the news we really have for you. Uh, make sure you tune in. Um, later today, we'll be doing a live video. Again, uh, we're still working out what we're going to do. I think maybe we're going to try to keep the lives going until um, we really have the, um, the the season back, and then we'll have a different schedule we'll follow. So anyway, make sure you tune into that later today. Uh, make sure you um, like the video. Subscribe to the channel. If you haven't subscribed, what are you doing? We know a lot of the people, our analytics tell us that aren't subscribed, that watch our videos every day. Don't know why you're watching every day but not subscribing. If you're coming from Twitter and you're just opening it on the app there and watching it, come on, man. Create an account. Subscribe to the channel and help us by helping yourself as well. Anyway, also hit that notification bell. Stay updated for all of our latest videos. Follow Beyond Canary Zone at Beyond Canary Zone on Twitter and Instagram. Follow me at Justin Sofro and follow our boy Julian Genoti at Genoti151 as well. Forza Juve, Forza Bianconeri.